Wherever we look into the customs of ancient nations regarding the origin of the names given to the days of the week we discover a unity of purpose. Everything shows a common source, a similar intention or meaning, in devoting the seven days of the week each to one of the seven planets. Thus we find that not only did the English names derive their origin from the Saxon names for the same days, which were the names of the Slavonian gods, the planets, but the French, Spanish, and Italian nations have taken exactly the same names as the ancient Romans had for the seven days. The first day they called Dies Dominicus or Dominica, the Lord's Day, meaning the Lord's Son, for the Son was always called Dominus Sol, the Lord's Son. Thus, the Persians called their god Mithra, the Sun, the Lord Mithra, and the Syrians gave their epithet of Adonis, which equally means Lord, to the Sun. This word is derived from the Hebrew, Adonai, the name of God, the root of the word being, Dan, a ruler or judge. The seven principal deities among the Saxons were, the Sun, the Moon, Duisco, Woden, Thor, Freyr, Sita. These were the five planets following the Sun and Moon in the same order as among the Romans, with one exception, where Mercury and Mars change places. They did not originate those names, as the Scandinavian nations had no knowledge of astronomy. These people, the most learned of all the modern Indian nations, equally with the Scandinavian nations, the Romans, Chaldeans, Persians, Hebrews, Arabs, and Egyptians, all devoted the seven days to the seven planets, in the order of their several rates of motion in the zodiac. This had been determined by the observations of the earliest astrologers. By these the day was divided into twelve hours, not equal hours of sixty minutes each, but each being one twelfth part of the time from sunrise to sunset, and the night, also, into twelve hours. All modern theology has its rise in the immeasurably old number philosophy of the ancient world. The name Jah was given to our universe because it represented the number 16, which in turn was composed of 3 plus 4 equals 7 and 4 plus 5 equals 9, J equals 10, A equals 1, H equals 5. These two combinations are the two fundamental right angles of all geometry and the ones upon which most of our symbolisms are founded. The astounding recurrence of the number 7, not only in geometrical figures, but in countless curious objects of human speculation, caused it to be regarded with superstitious awe. It was regarded as one of good augury because most of the things beneficial to mankind came in series of sevens. When the ancient stargazers had finally determined the planets of our universe, those, of course, discernible to the naked eye, each item of the numerous septenary sets conceived of by our forefathers was attributed to the influence of one of the planets, deemed the dwelling of a superior intelligence active for the good or ill of humanity. Thus the seven planets were the seven old gods of the Babylonians, Shamash, the Sun, Sin, the Moon, Nebo, Mercury, Ishtar, Venus, Nergal, Mars, Marduk, Jupiter, and E.A., Saturn. They had other names as gods in nearly every oriental country. To the Hebrews they were the archangels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Samael, Earl, Amiel, Zadkiel. To the early Christians they were the angels of the seven churches. They were represented among the Jews, Babylonians, Egyptians, and Persians by seven branched candlesticks, Menorah, or seven flamed altar fires. The number seven is also found in the seven vowels, the seven primary colors, the seven notes of the musical scale, the seven metals, the seven liberal arts, the seven rounds of the spiritual ladder or staircase, the seven deadly sins, the seven sorrows of the Virgin Mary, the seven rays the seven rays of Indra in Hindu mythology, the seven stars of the Pleiades, in Taurus, the seven ages of man. You even see seven in the series Game of Thrones with the seven kingdoms and the high septon.